Hi, I'm Dr. Yvette Liu. I'm a family doctor, and today we're going to talk about how the pandemic is going to affect our summer and how to plan for it. As we head into summer, a lot of people are wondering what summer is going to look like. How can we plan for it? Should we plan for travel? Are there going to be festivals and fairs? Unfortunately, until we have a good treatment for COVID-19 or a vaccine for it, we're still going to have to do some form of physical distancing. Now, we will be able to open up a bit, but things are not going to look normal for a little while to come. Let's first talk about our pandemic bubble. So the pandemic bubble is the group of people that you spend the most time with and the group of people that you're in regular contact with. So right now, for most of us who are still um, staying physically distanced from people, our pandemic bubble is most likely the people in our household and maybe the people that you see at work. So it's a very small group. However, as we start to open up and get into summer, as cases start going down, we can open up our pandemic bubbles and introduce more contacts into our everyday lives. Now, how far you open up your pandemic bubble depends on your risk level. So someone who's of older age or who has risk factors like diabetes, high blood pressure, lung disease, or other chronic diseases might want to think about keeping their pandemic bubble smaller because every time you open up your pandemic bubble to a new person, then you're at increased risk of catching the novel coronavirus. So if you feel like you're very healthy, then maybe you can open up your pandemic bubble a little wider. However, one thing to keep in mind is whether or not you're in contact with someone who's high risk. So if you have grandparents and you want to spend time with them, then you might not want to open up your pandemic bubble and you might want to keep it small so that you don't um, transmit the virus to them accidentally. Remember, anytime you open up your pandemic bubble to someone, you're also opening, out, uh, opening it up to everyone that they're in contact with because they can catch the virus from the people that they're in contact with and then spread it to you. So you need to think about the people you're in contact with and how many people they're in contact with. So that's what we call the pandemic bubble. Now let's talk about businesses because businesses are going to start opening up again, especially the ones that have been closed or have been restricted. If you are the owner of a business, then you want to think about how you can move portions of your business online. So if there's anything that can be done by phone or by video, like ordering or um, delivery, then you want to move those kinds of things online. For people who are in the office or in the store, you want to be able to give people room to physically distance, like we're doing at the grocery store. So limiting the number of people in the store, adding physical barriers so that your staff aren't in contact with customers all these are creative solutions that allow people to physically distance yet still come and do their business at your company. The other thing I want to talk about is events. So we're probably not going to be seeing big events like large concerts or fairs because that will be just too many people gathering together and the risk of spread of the coronavirus to a lot of people would be very high at those types of events. However, we will be able to have small gatherings, most likely under 50 people. And at these gatherings, if you're hosting one of them, you want to think about how to allow people to physically distance. So maybe have chairs spaced farther apart. You don't want to have any buffets. You want to stick to plated meals so that people aren't sharing food. And then for people who might be nervous about attending your event because they have a chronic illness or are of older age, you want to be able to maybe have a live streaming kind of function or tape your event so that they can participate in it afterwards, just to include them so that they can be part of your event as well. The last thing I want to talk about is sports events. So most likely we will be able to resume some outdoor sports like Little League and other sports that you uh, do outside that allow for physical distancing. There may be some rule changes to allow for us to physically distance, but I think that it will be good for people to take part in outdoor sports. There's been some talk that we may even be able to have hockey in the future, but most likely we won't have fans in the stadium. Uh, the stuff that I've heard with regards to hockey is that most likely the players will just play for the cameras and that we will watch from home. So 
in summary, it looks like we're gonna have to be thinking of lots of creative solutions to stay safe while the novel coronavirus is still circulating. We'll be able to go a little bit back to normal, but not completely back to normal. And I look forward to seeing all the creative solutions that people have to stay safe. Once again, if you have any additional questions, please post them in the comments below. Share this video with your friends, and I'll see you next time. My name is Dr. Yvette Liu.